I am Laura Christofferson. I am a 2020 fellow and I am very excited and honored today to be able to, to host the Trusted CI Fellows panel for this year. And the fellows for this year are Eli, Michael, Amia, Deb, Juan, Matthew, Mauricio and Rick. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to tell you a little bit about the program. And Vaughn already did that in his um, keynote, but I'll just add a couple more details. And then I will turn it over to each fellow and they will tell you about their experiences in the fellows program. So to start, the uh, vision of the Trusted CI Fellows Program was to empower members of the scientific community with basic knowledge of cybersecurity and the understanding of Trusted CI services, and then to have them serve as cybersecurity liaisons to their home communities. So in 2019, that's when this was established. Um, it's now in its third cohort in 2019 and 2020. There were six fellows each for a total of 12 alumni. And in 2021, eight fellows were accepted. So you will hear from eight folks today. Um, and what the program tries to do is uh, get, uh, get people from diverse set of backgrounds. So it's not going to be your standard uh, uh, cybersecurity professional necessarily. It might be someone from a psychology background or who knows. So. Um, these fellows have access to training and other resources to fo foster their professional development. And what they do is they take this information back, of course, to their respective or home communities and give this information and try to be an advocate for good cybersecurity practices and also to report back to Trusted CI on their experiences, on any challenges they have faced and any practices that they have found to be successful. So what does the program look like? Well, it's a virtual institute. In other words, there are approximately 20 weekly Zoom sessions on topics related to cyber cybersecurity for science. So some topics could include privacy, identity management, social engineering, or even a day in, a day in the life of a CISO. Um, and there's travel support um, to go to PERC, the, this summit here, the NSF Cybersecurity Summit, and one mutually agreed upon opportunity. At the end of the program, they are to, the fellows are to write or uh, present or write a short white paper on security needs of their community and some initial steps they will take or have taken to address them. Um, it's not a strict uh, thing. So it's, it, it is open to creativity and, and interpretation and the need of the fellow. So now, I get to show you the wonderful fellows. So um, we're gonna start with, and I probably should have done this, forgive me, I didn't think to do it. Um, that would have made things a lot easier to see. Um, so we'll start with Eli, and then we'll go to Michael, Amia, Deb, Shuan, Matthew, Mauricio, and Rick. So I'm gonna stop sharing and turn it over to Eli. Good day, everybody. Uh, thank you for everybody for being here. Thank you for the introduction. And most importantly, thank you for uh, considering me for this program. It, uh, it was a great, uh, great experience uh, this year, uh, even though everything was remotely, but uh, I don't think anyone remembers what life used to be before we before zoom. So, uh, so we got all used to that. So a little bit of background about me. Uh, my name is Eli. I I am I am I come from academia, so I'm I'm an academic. I have a PhD in mathematics. Uh, I was trained as an applied mathematician, and right now I am faculty at West Point Academy in New York. Uh, I teach as as a faculty. I teach. I do research, and I do a lot of service as well. This is my day to day uh, work. Uh, the reason I applied for this uh, for this uh, fellowship or for this program was uh, I wanted to understand um, what type of cybersecurity research happens outside of academia. So on a personal level, I deal a lot with with uh, machine learning and especially adversarial machine learning in my research, in particular in cybersecurity domains, which um, we call them uh, constrained domains. And the adversarial machine learning deals with uh, with how how 
you can train a certain algorithm to give you some type of some type of uh, uh, answers but then but then these answers can be easily fooled to get you to uh, to something different to get you just a different as we call it fooling the fooling the classifier uh, through this program i was i was lucky enough to meet many of um, of uh, my fellow cybersecurity experts and from very different the, the, what makes this program great in my opinion is that i it's not another round table with a bunch of academics it's 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 really a group a bunch of great people from very different uh, that bring very different perspective uh, about the cybersecurity topic uh, i think everybody who everybody should apply to this program it's uh, it's very neat and I will finish with one little thing. It's the the we we the most uh, the talk that stood out the most to me was uh, a beautiful talk for by a couple of people, uh, Dr. Miller and Dr. Heyman from uh, uh, Wisconsin Madison, when they talked about how to keep your code safe from attacks. I I, I thought that was a, a phenomenal talk. They talked about the the whole or I learned the whole dilemma between the attacker versus the defender uh, mentality and the whole five step or five principles to, to assess your vulnerability in any given code uh, you're working on. So uh, in a nutshell, I would say thank you for giving me this opportunity. Thank you for my fellow, for my fellow fellows for, for, for a great year. And, uh, and I look forward to future collaboration and hopefully seeing you in person in the future. Thank you. Well, I believe I was next on the list. So uh, I'll introduce myself real quickly. My name is Michael Kyle. I uh, currently am at University of Delaware as a staff member. Um, just going into my background real briefly, uh, my original undergraduate degree was a Bachelor of Science in Meteorology from Kane University in northern New Jersey. Um, more recently, I actually just graduated this past July from the University of Delaware with a Master in science, uh, Cybersecurity. Um, and as far as my employment background, um, I actually have a interesting diversity uh, with regards to it, because I actually started it at a nonprofit with the Mount Washington Observatory as a weather observer and IT specialist on the summit um, research facility there. I uh, briefly had a stint in the private industry with a renewable energy company in upstate New York. And then before coming to the University of Delaware, I was a federal contractor to the National Weather Service. And then um, in March of 2020, I joined the University of Delaware as a scientific application consultant. Um, from the get-go, my jobs really started converting from uh, focus in weather into the IT side of things. And with the last two positions I had um, as a government contractor and with, as a consult, uh, scientific applica application consultant at University of Delaware, I started focusing more on HPC systems. Um, my current role at University of Delaware, I um, uh, help the researchers across the university uh, with uh, primarily uh, using the HPC system, setting up accounts, help, trouble, helping them troubleshoot any issues they're having with software, or um, consult with uh, about their, uh, their code that they're using, and try and help them with anything else they might need, such as data management or visualization techniques. Um, outside that, I also help coordinate uh, workshops to help train researchers uh, leverage the HPC uh, functions that we have here at campus and any of the other cyber infrastructure um, options that we have for them. Um, and then the last part and kind of the uh, more, in my opinion, the more interesting side is I, I'm trying to build and uh, create a, um, outreach to researchers, not just at the University of Delaware, but for our, some of our sister um, organizations nearby and across the mid-Atlantic. Um, the, as with regards to the uh, Trusted CI Fellowship this past year, it's really been great. I, 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 there's a lot that can be said. Eli said a lot of great things, and I'm sure my other fellows will say a lot of other great things. Um, but the one thing I actually really enjoyed about this past year is the, um, the diversity that it really offered amongst all the different fellows in our backgrounds, um, but particularly that it 
nothing was assumed that we were experts in cybersecurity by any means in this. Um, the way the whole program was set up, it kind of took the approach of introducing us to cybersecurity from the very basics and then kind of guiding us through the different aspects of cybersecurity from network uh, monitoring and logging to network secure, uh, secure, securing networks um, for uh, detecting and uh, monitoring for threats. And it kept us building on there to authentication and keeping, as uh, Eli mentioned, with keeping your code safe. And I, I really enjoyed that, but uh, I also really liked how towards the end of the program, we saw more into certain aspects. Um, like there was this talk from Ruth, uh, I, I apologize, I mispronounced the name, Ruth Beaver, um, and it was about uh, the day in the life of the CISO uh, from her position at Caltech, which I thought was fascinating just to get an inside look at what her job was and how in some regards, I thought it was, she had a much more hands on than I would ever thought a CISO would have on some of the day to day threats. Um, and in addition to that, uh, one talk I'm also looking forward to attending it tomorrow is um, the sister organization of Trusted CDI, which is the um, research SOC. That was, a, that was one of our last time meetings that we had as a group. And I thought that was really fascinating. So I'm looking forward to hearing and learning more about that into the future. Um, so, I mean, as this was a great opportunity, um, as someone who is going, who started this uh, as it's still in school for a master's program, I, I will say that I still learned a ton from this, um, uh, this opportunity in the fellowship. Um, the, the, while COVID did have some impacts with regards to the traveling and things like that, I, I still would say that this was an awesome opportunity and I'm looking forward to continuing my relationship with the trusted CIs. Uh, fellows and the ones who are going to be following us and hopefully continuing to build a connection and growing stronger with everyone and uh, yeah and hopefully as Eli mentioned see each other in person in the future at future conferences. Thank you. Thanks Michael. Amia you're up. Amia, we cannot hear you. I don't know why, because you're not muted. And I think we might have just lost him. Oh, yep, he's back though. Sorry folks, technical difficulties. Still can't hear a Mia. Um, he's going to reboot. So Amia, we'll move on to the next person and come back to you when you get back on. Groovy. Okay, so that's you, Deb. Great. Uh, my name is Deb McCaffrey and I work as a research liaison for Michigan Medicine which is the Academic Medical Center of the University of Michigan. Uh, so my background is in physical chemistry. I went to Berkeley uh, to get a doctorate in physical chemistry. And uh, to use Henry Neiman's favorite phrase, I fell backwards into research support. Uh, and I haven't looked back. Um, but being at an academic medical center, we have a lot of folks who are using um, uh, sensitive data types, particularly PHI. Uh, so um, we have a lot of regulations and policies that need to be met um, 
And my goal of this program was to just learn more about uh, the nuts and bolts of cybersecurity to try to ease some of these very strict requirements uh, for to be more flexible for research uh, while still maintaining the same um, security standards. And so I've just learned a whole bunch about all the different aspects uh, like identity management, writing secure software, and it's just a lot of good material that I've been able to use. And I'm actually currently uh, running a project to document our uh, security processes for researchers because we don't have like one location for all of that yet. So I'm taking the opportunity to put it all in one place and then also explain it from a research perspective. And um, this program has just provided a wealth of information for that. And I'll say one thing that stood out from this program for me was they brought in a specific speaker on privacy, which I was glad to see. Um, that's a big difference between universities and industry is this privacy aspect. Like in industry, fo folks don't really have much privacy as far as employees go. And I think that's a misconception that a lot of folks over in universities encounter is they think, um, employees don't have any privacy at universities too, and that's absolutely not the case. So I was just very pleased to see a specific topic of privacy. Great, thank you, Deb. So it looks like Amia is not back on yet. So let's move on to Shuan. Thanks for having me. Can you all hear me? Yes. My name. Thanks. My name is Xu Yuan Metcalf, Associate Professor at Florida State University. I'm a behavior information scientist at heart, working on cyber infrastructure security research. My research interests include trusted human computer interaction, privacy and ethics, and cyber forensics and investigations, such as profiling cyber bullying based on charged language action cues. So generally, I study trust, deception, disinformation, and deep fake synthetic images. That is both technical and social aspects of cybersecurity. I designed interaction research and scenario-based experiments. The process of conceptualizing research phenomenon based on data and observations. This is really uh, fascinating to me. My overall objectives is to disseminate and share my research findings with the scientific community. I have benefited from being part of the Trusted CI Fellows Network and hope to have a greater impact on how we think about cyber infrastructure security and how we improve communication, collaboration, and sharing ideas by improving cyber infrastructure. My initial thoughts about the Trusted CI program was that it was about learning cybersecurity basics as they are applied to cyber infrastructure. But I was blown away by the progressive and advanced topics and the discussion on various aspects of cyber infrastructure. In my world, cyber infrastructure refers to the campus research environment and the relationship between science and security. So this was an important lesson for me, how essential this relationship is to the nation's cybersecurity. What I found most beneficial about the Trusted CI Fellows Program is that I got exposures to the most up-to-date research practice and perspectives in cybersecurity. As adopted by the current cyber infrastructures of many university campuses. I have been able to share this perspective with my university at Florida State. Cybersecurity is a very complex concept with comprehensive operations involving interdisciplinary perspectives, research, and practice. For example, we have examined some advanced topics like how a cybersecurity program can be developed from scratch. 
we learn not only about identity and access management, but how a federated identity can work in research collaboration. I previously thought that only financial or military classified data requires significant security, but the talk on a service provider's perspective to safeguarding research data in order to meet NIST and CMMC standards and requirements on campus was striking. It helped me to understand the differences and importance of securing controlled unclassified information. The principle of zero trust presents a significant challenge to securing research data in a fundamentally open academic environment. We also examined the practical aspects of cyber defense operations and incident response through the eyes of a CISO. A fairly routine perspective made all the more engaging because of the intensity of daily challenges. I'm familiar with the nuances of blockchain technology in financial transactions and supply chain management, but to adopt blockchain technology in providing the provenance of research data, this for me has been a paradigm shift. These are just a few examples of applied and practical innovations that can be adopted and implemented across campus networks. So the one thing that stands out for me is that cybersecurity is a community effort. It takes collective will to achieve the overall objectives of cybersecurity, privacy, and ethics while supporting the campus cyber infrastructure. It's an art to balance cybersecurity and universe, uh, sorry, cybersecurity and usability. It's also a significant challenge to provide an open campus collaborative environment based on the principle of zero trust. So how can we achieve all this? Of course, it requires a community. And I'm so grateful to be a trusted CI fellow and a part of this network. To me, this has not just been a one year fellowship, but a lifetime engagement and commitment. I have already started the conversation at our campus regarding the trusted CI framework. And I hope that together we can make a difference on how research data is protected, shared, and reproducible with high integrity. I really encourage you all to make a difference in our society. Please consider applying for the Trusted CI Fellowship Program. You will be learning from many wonderful thought leaders on the front lines of protecting and supporting critical cyber infrastructure. Thanks, Juan. And oh, we just got a Mia back. Awesomeness. Okay, so let's give him a moment. Am I audible from this computer? Yes, we can hear you. Thank Yay. God. <laughs> I so apologize. Uh, just on the big day, uh, all sorts of crash happens. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I'm sorry, I do not have the nice uh, background image on this computer. So I'm just going to use white. And it's also probably good because uh, I was going, I'm going to repeat a lot of things that Michael already said. So, um, uh, so uh, I'm Ami Omaji. I work at Purdue University Research Computing. Um, and it's my pleasure to be a part of the Trusted CI Fellows this year. Uh, I work as a senior computational scientist at Purdue. Uh, what that means is I help scientists with their uh, computation and, and data analysis workflows, uh, help to optimize those workflows uh, so that they can get started uh, running on the HPC clusters, uh, finish their simulations faster and so on. And oftentimes I also consult uh, researchers about the security needs for their projects. Um, I have worked in the field of software reliability and security for a while. Uh, in my graduate studies, I did uh, vulnerability analysis of Android applications, which is probably a little uh, 
little side uh, aside from uh, all that trusted CI does, but but uh, it's still interesting, and I I still continue to work on Android security to this day. Uh, so as part of the HPC team, I spent a lot of time on uh, software deployment, software testing, and so on. So basically making sure that the HPC clusters are uh, functioning properly. They are giving uh, scientific results or reproducible scientific results and so on. And uh, so, couple of years back when I heard about Trusted CI Fellows Program, so I immediately thought that, hey, uh, I need to apply for this because uh, it's going to be about the operational side of security. And I have been involved in the research side of security or, or more about the pedantic knowledge of security. So I applied last year and uh, I got selected. So thanks to Trusted CI and NSF for, for developing this program uh, to help us grow in our, in our cybersecurity careers. And through this program, um, first, I, I would say I made an amazing group of fellows. So all the fellow fellows, uh, thank you all for sharing your experiences, uh, sharing uh, some amazing questions, all the discussions. I loved it. So I'm truly humbled to, to be a part of this cohort. And so over the last few months, we, ha we had a topic, we had a range of sessions on various topics, like ranging from technical to operations, policy and people and so on. And, and I love the diversity aspect of things. So Michael mentioned a lot about diversity. I'm probably going to be repetitive and you are going to hear more about diversity again. Uh, but but I must emphasize that, and uh, I truly love the different backgrounds, uh, different skills, experiences uh, of the fellows as well as the speakers uh, throughout this program. And thanks to all the speakers for for sharing their their experiences. I particularly remember a couple of talks. The my, my most uh, interesting one I found was the talk by Ruth Ann Bevier. Uh, Michael already mentioned that. Uh, but it was fascinating to learn, uh, like dealing with people's fears and trepidation about cybersecurity is uh, as important uh, for being a cybersecurity professional as the technical aspects are, right? And, and it was, uh, Wonderful, wonderful talk. So thank you, Ruthann. Uh, also last week, ha we had an amazing talk by Susan Sons uh, about research SOC. And I was asking her that, hey, Susan, how do you evaluate uh, how much knowledge your clients gained uh, through engagement with research SOC? And she reminded me that, hey, uh, knowledge is one part of security, but you also have to apply it. So small pieces of wisdoms like that uh, and the experience of all the speakers, uh, that's what sets this program apart. So going forward, I would uh, absolutely love to continue my, my collaboration or uh, engagement with Trusted CI. Uh, I hope to collaborate with, with some of you fellows and uh, Research SOC and Trusted CI and also the things I have learned uh, through this program, uh, this will definitely help the, the researchers at Purdue and, and the nationwide uh, scientific community, uh, whoever I interact with. So thank you all. Thanks, Samia. Matthew, you're on. Yes, hello. My name is Matthew Peterson. I am a senior faculty research assistant at Oregon State University in the Center for Quantitative Life Sciences. At the center, I'm responsible for the IT operations for our core laboratory, which performs high throughput DNA sequencing. I'm a bioinformatics trainer that instructs graduate students in the use of the Linux command line and Python programming. And I'm currently developing systems to securely collect and process health data under HIPAA level controls. Prior to engaging in trusted CI, most of my security knowledge and experience were from a boots on the ground approach relating to system administration and programming. Or to put it in another way, do what you can to keep the bad actors at bay. 
What I found immensely valuable in this fellowship is the ability to interact with my peers and the experts who have presented to our cohort. The wide range of security experiences and challenges the presenters have encountered, continue to find solutions to, or have already solved, has been amazing. Everything I've heard and been able to discuss has helped expand my worldview of security as it relates to research in academic environments. Some of the technical themes that I've uh, been touched upon include the architecture of network and host security, large scale monitoring for threats, identity and access management, and software insurance, assurance with regards to analyzing a project's source code in order to identify and mitigate vulnerabilities. From a management perspective, I've been exposed to the challenges that organizations are faced with when adopting a cybersecurity framework. These challenges include institutional buy-in, project scope, budget, and stakeholder responsibility, all items that need to be addressed before you even begin to discuss the technical implementation. For securing research, numerous presenters offered their experiences, both successes along with their trials and tribulations, in adopting compliance frameworks within their organizations. Hearing and, be able to, hearing and being able to discuss these real world experiences has provided me valuable insights that don't appear in any textbook. Finally, the questions and dialogue uh, engaged in by the other trusted CI fellows has allowed me to understand their unique perspectives and interests, often in topic areas that I had not previously considered. I've greatly valued all of the contributions made from our cohort and the, converse, the connections I've made. The one thing that stands out to me as a common theme in the Trusted CI Fellowship is the concept of risk management. Risk is pervasive in all environments and mitigating that risk while still empowering research to go forward is a fine balancing act. From an extreme perspective, you can, go, you can be highly confident that your data is secure if you lock it away in an office on a machine that is not connected to the internet. The downside to this is that the utility and productivity of the research may be greatly diminished. On the other end of the spectrum, some projects may require internet connected systems containing sensitive data with numerous researchers, including external collaborators, performing a variety of job roles to carry on the research. This can introduce a numerous challenges from a security auditing and compliance perspective while needing to ensure that the research can continue forward. Timothy Frederick, head of the Office of Information Security at the University Corporation for Atmospheric Research, gave a great analogy to the trusted CI fellows. Research projects with their own security requirements are like individual paintings, each with their own lighting, perspective, strokes, signature, and colors. What helps guide us to securing these individual paintings are the frames that encapsulate them. <clears throat> at different frames for different pictures. We have at our disposal numerous industry security frameworks from a variety of sources that include NIST, CMMC, HIPAA, and Trusted CI. The challenge is to help find and tailor the right framework to each research painting to ensure compliance, mitigate risk, and <clears throat> help drive the research for forward. This is especially important given the limited resources and bandwidth that any organization has, and that a one size fit all solution uh, is maybe not the best approach. This is especially true with new research projects with unique needs, which are constantly coming online and security threats are ever evolving. I know that the positive experiences from this fellowship will help me to contribute to secure research solutions at Oregon State University. In addition, I look forward to sharing my experiences with the other trusted CI fellows, past, present and future as they work to do the same. Thank you. Thank you so much, Matthew. It's your turn, Mauricio. Oh no, we can't hear you, Mauricio. Not again. It's just one of those days. Mauricio, look at your boom mic. Yeah, I know. There, there we go. Okay. We've got you. Good. I just have to click sound properties and you decide, okay, you want sound? I can give you sound. So as I was saying, Shuyuan, Amiya, Matthew, and others gave really nice proper talks. So don't expect that from me. So what should I talk about me? People claim that you know I'm doing a senior security uh, engineer at Rancy Fabric, uh, you know, Fabric across borders. Before that, I used to dabble at the credit card and medical industry, academia, all that stuff. 
But now the most important part is that, you know, we are dealing with uh, international issues, which at five o'clock, let me do a plug in. It's going to be a talk about that. If you survive until then, there will be. What, you know, the part I think I like about uh, this Trust the CI Fellowship, even though I don't get to dress like Gandalf, is that, you know, we are going, we're not really talking about, oh, use this tool, use that tool and things like that, you know, but more about how the different organizations and the fellow fellows, if you will, have been addressing or dealing with their security and privacy issues at their uh, sites, locations, employments, and whatever you want to call it. The second part is about cat herding, which is having my recurring theme, which loosely translates to how you can get someone, be a researcher or a fellow worker that starts with, oh, protection, security, really hampers my style to protect my bacon before something really ha happens, which is kind of important because, you know, if you just consider ransomware, I think the best, uh, the best descript description about ransomware is that its recovery is an open heart surgery. So lots of excitement. The part I like about uh, the, if you have to put one thing that I really think stands out of this uh, fellowship, is how reachable are the presenters. I usually have, I should not tell that to Matthew because he's going to be shocked, a lot of questions, but I usually try not to end asking them during the presentation because I really don't want to monopolize it. So I end up, you know, sometimes just emailing the presenters and they're really helpful, they take time. Sometimes my questions are like, a, feel like newspaper articles and they do take the time to reply it. So I, I really, really appreciate that. Since we just have one thing that stands out, let's talk about the second one. The second one is that I, I think I really like the camaraderie. I hope we still be able to reach out to each other and maybe meet to in real person. Or if nothing else, just continue. It's like, you know, until then, we can be uh, talking to each other on the Slack thingy or email. But so the sense of, you know, fellowship and camaraderie, I think really worth it, really worth attending it. I'm glad that I'm here. And in the future, I would like to see if I can uh, help this, maybe contributing later or coning people into becoming fellows. So that's all I have for now. Now let's see someone say something clever for a change instead of me. Thank you, Marcio. Rick, you're up. Okay, well, I don't know if I can do clever, but I'll try to be um, brief since uh, I believe I am the last one. So I'm Rick Wagner. I work at the University of California, San Diego. Um, I worked here previously, um, first doing astrophysics um, and learning how to run MPI jobs for science, um, which led to me working at the San Diego Supercomputer Center. Um, I was very fortunate to have uh, several years working with Globus at the University of Chicago, and the combination of experience with trying to, not trying to, but successfully um, work with uh, the security folks at SDSC, um, to balance the needs of securing the system while making sure that it's still available to the users. And then again, uh, several opportunities at, while I was with Globus, um, working with like the DOE and other federal agents projects funded by other federal agencies but really highlighted the need for security to become more of a focus um, across the research spectrum. Um, I'm very grateful that I was able to participate in this fellowship because I think that as we know, uh, our research projects always are diverse, even when it's just a project that focuses on um, within the campus with limited resources, say individual PIs, 
and a grad student or two, you're still dealing with the complexities of very large organizations. And more often it becomes even more complex as we brush up against other institutions and the funding agencies and their policies. So I was very grateful for both the variety of presentations and then hearing the perspectives of other engaged folks, you know, the other fellows to show what their concerns were. Because it kind of highlights if I'm dealing with a collaborator at another institution, this is the kind of thing that they may be thinking about. So as opposed to say a very narrow focus program on a specific uh, security framework or a set of controls, this is, you know, this is what someone at a medical center or another university or um, doing research in cybersecurity uh, may tackle. And uh, for the presentations, there are two that I'd really like to highlight. One is Emily Adams from Indiana University, CACR. Uh, for me, for one of the projects I'm working on, her discussion of developing a security program, basically establishing the policies and guidelines for a, a group that is going to be persistent and have to maintain that was extremely relevant. And I was very grateful because she shared some of her documentation, um, which was based on the trusted CI framework, but it showed in practice how it had been adapted to their organization. So seeing the kind of changes they made for that was very helpful. Um, and I think many of us, uh, Ruth Ann Beaver uh, from Caltech, her presentation on the day in the life uh, was very insightful because it showed that in addition to all of these policies decisions, the engagement in the focus in day-to-day -day operations and activities and treating various stakeholders um, and uh, making sure you're still responsive was very uh, revealing as in, I don't know if that's a role I could take on. That is a somebody who, you know, continuous energy to support that. Um, there's actually, Educause has, by the way, um, blog posts by several CISOs um, from academia that is worth reading. And I will say that a lot of them all have similar experiences. Um, so with that, uh, I would like to thank my fellow fellows um, and uh, the Trusted CI for putting this on. And I am looking forward to staying engaged in this community um, for the foreseeable future. Thanks, Rick. And now I'm gonna turn it over to Diana Simmer. Thank you, Laura. Um, I just wanted to um, thank the 2021 fellows for their uh, participation and acknowledge them with these um, plaques. It would spend a great seven months meeting with them weekly. Thank you again. Back to you, Laura. Okie dokie. So in case oh, so you heard a lot of really cool things um, from each of them they talked about applying some of the things that they've learned in um, in their work uh, getting to meet each other and and talk with each other um, getting to see how things are on with boots on the ground like the day in the life of the CISO um, and also getting to hear and learn a lot of, about a lot of great things um, if you are interested in being a trusted CI fellow, the application period is open and the deadline is November 12th. This is the URL and this is the uh, email address if you have any questions. And what I'd like to do, because we do have, let's see, we have one quick minute. If you have any questions, we'd love to hear them on the Q&A. Sorry, we didn't anticipate having time for questions, but we do have just a quick minute if you have any questions. Oh, wait a minute, Susan is saying we have 10. An op oh, right, we have 10. I can't tell time. At 3.20 is when this ends. So we have 10 minutes for questions. So please do put in a question in the Q&A. We would love to take your questions. While everyone else is typing, I selfishly have a question. Um, what is a subject that you as fellows wish you'd had a chance to get more insight into that we can look at for next year's cohort? 
So uh, one thing that we talked about, and it was, I believe it was on the schedule, and uh, unfortunately there was a conflict, was the science DMZs. Um, the, we talked about them briefly in a couple of the other segments, but a full segment on the science DMZs I thought would have been great. Uh, unfortunately, I think we ran out of time at the end of the year with the schedule conflicts, but that's something that I, I would have appreciated a little bit more on. I think uh, probably a bit more uh, help about how to create your, because we had one about starting a program, but how to do a assessment. Because I know this kind of sounds like a tie into the uh, trusted CI assessment thing that, you know, Fabric did, but even that, you know, maybe a, uh, have someone from uh, trust, the other side of you know trust CI come and say, hey, just how you do this stuff, uh, this you know our policies because uh, sometimes I, I believe that you know the trust it's even the trust CI uh, how you call it uh, uh, anyway there is the 800 uh, 171 853 and then trust CI has their own thing which is not as overwhelming. So it'd be nice for, uh, since, you know, kind of like all the same people get together and then say like, okay, start with this. Since we control it, we can help you get up to speed and you go from there. And then if you feel you can go something else, uh, just, uh, you know, go for it. But at least you have a starting point. So we have um, John Haverlack wrote us, I know John, um, sorry, I like John. Um, and he says, I'm interested in how to think about cybersecurity from a decentralized cyber infrastructure approach. So it sounds like he's um, letting us know that that would be a topic he would find interesting if he were a fellow. Is that correct? Well, John can't actually speak. But um, thoughts on that, fellows? I, I have one, and it's similar to what Mauricio was bringing up because. Um, the one of the challenges when you like, as, as Michael mentioned, you can't just learn all the frameworks and all the controls. So, you know, I think a fun session would be either a group of auditors or a group of CISOs, bring them in and say, you know, you have groups that are running their own infrastructure. You may not be able to have them rely on any single part of your enterprise. What are the three things you want them to be able to tell you at a moment's notice? or have under control. And I think about you know, the data that they're handling, um, the identities and accounts of the systems, um, and maybe what's the next one? Would you say the network, the systems or assets? You know, And so those are the things when I think about decentralized is if I go and work with a research group, what can I tell them to prioritize? Make sure they have a handle on the data that they're working with, make sure that they know who is on their systems and how they're authenticating them, and then what assets or systems are handling or processing the data and then go from there. Cool, all right. We've got a question from Douglas Lotman. Are all of the fellows from academia or does NSFCI consider those with strong corporate product security experience? Any of you would consider yourself not necessarily an academic or spanning? I mean, so when I actually got with, um, applied for the Trusted CI Fellowship, I was only at the University of Delaware for six months at the time. Um, I've been here for only a year and a half now. While I help with a lot of the research for the academia, I wouldn't quite consider myself an academic. Um, uh, I would be just comfortable helping and consulting it's anyone in the private sector as I would here at the University of Delaware, whether it's for um, HPC or uh, cyber cybersecurity related matters. I think uh, I, I can see the, uh, the reason, you know, it, it, it's a valid point to have not only the academia, but the industry and get together because, you know, if you consider, you know, at least in my case, experimental test beds, a lot of stuff that's being dealt, uh, being, uh, people are facing right now, people like Google, AWS, they have dealt with it. So 
I, I can see a point for that. And also I myself that, you know, when I have a question on security, I start uh, reaching out to my friends that they usually they work in the industry. In fact, one of those uh, gave me this shirt from uh, the company he owns. And I said, okay. But that's the, uh, the, and in fact, a lot of times I think on things from an industry standpoint, and then you have to massage it back to the, academia, which sometimes is very interesting to put in a nice way. But that to be for another app, uh, for another story that to be on the 18th. Yes, another plugin. Yeah, and just to follow up on that, I think even people from academia could benefit from learning a bit more about industry because um, uh, at my institution, I've seen a lot of folks who get data from industry, um, even if it's like data about uh, something that's not even remotely sensitive, it's still um, a corporation's data. So they ask for the same security requirements as like PHI. Uh, so that's something we've been fielding a lot lately. Like, um, uh, a company that shall not be named in Cupertino. <laughs> yeah, so we've been seeing a lot more of that. Any other thoughts from fellows? And note, everyone, we have well now two minutes. If there is one, if there is another question, I think just to chime in on that, uh, academia is a strange beast. If you have a corporate, even if it spans multiple countries, they can enforce global standards. You're using this tool for communication. You're using this tool for data management. Once you get to academia, I think the analogy was given, it's, it's a city. You have a power plant, you have a stadium, you have fast food. Everybody can be off doing their own thing, their own standard. It's kind of hard to get distributed IT to go lockstep with the same products, with the same methodologies especially when the research area, when they think, well, it's gonna just slow me down, I'm not gonna do that. So it's a really, uh, I don't wanna say tightrope balancing act, but kind of to merge or build relationships with the researchers, the different IT groups, uh, try to offer best solutions and, and get people to buy in, but you don't always have a, a mandate that you can come down with. Um, so I think Trusted CI has been great to illustrate the, the complexities or the nuances that we have to tackle. And Douglas had another question. He said, has the CI fellows made presentations on creating SDLC processes, process, anyway, I can't speak today, for OT, operational technology, ICS, industrial control systems? I'm sorry, folks, but we're out of time. <laughs>